G'day guys, back with the Outer Circle, and today we're going to be looking at the Humble Space Marine Bolt Gun. I did a previous video on this uh, really, really early in the channel's history, uh, like five, six years back. I think our channel birthday was actually yesterday, so yeah. Um, and the problem with the Bolt Gun is obviously it's a weapon, a science fiction weapon designed by people who really don't understand weapons. And that is not to take shots at them. Uh, forgive the pun. That is just to say that there's a lot more finer detail things that go into this kind of object. Like firearms are incredibly complicated, especially when it comes to futuristic ones. And no amount of, oh, but it's future tech and oh, it's, you know, space and there's wizards and the warp and yada yada. None of that really matters when it comes to talking about a mechanical object and how it functions in... A believable way and so what I've drawn on screen here is I think you can pretty safely say a 3d render of a traditional bolt gun minus magazine and for scaling purposes obviously the barrel interior is at the caliber of the bolt gun the largest caliber for a bolt gun listed is 70 caliber the standard seems to be actually 60 caliber for mid heresy all the way through 40k so that is the caliber that has been used and everything has been scaled off that. So if that is the caliber and this is a correct looking bolt gun with ejection port and magazine release and all that, this is the size of the weapon. Now you can see we get some weird things here like a comically large muzzle brake on the front here that would do absolutely nothing because the minute the round enters this muzzle brake so much gas is going out in every direction around it, it performs no function. We also have our inbuilt sight and our iron sights. We've got this big, bulky, cumbersome body, um, a bayonet lug of some sort on the front. And I did actually make the sights functional, uh, crazy enough. It'll be hard to see from this angle, but they do work. I just don't have enough fine control in this program to line it up. But anyway, they are functional iron sights. This design just would not work because in reality, that is a bolt gun. So, <laughs> it looks a lot uglier, I'll give you that. And a lot of this is just down to the fact that I actually bothered to put a body on it because you wouldn't have a body that looks the way it does on my quote-unquote realistic bolt gun. Why wouldn't you? Well, because it's not needed. You would design something that is functional over providing this form and real weapon design is all about that it's they can be ugly it doesn't matter how what they look like as long as they work and the bolt gun will be the same sort of thing and you'll really see that with the front of this weapon as we start to explore it so before we go anywhere a couple of principles i want to establish in traditional caseless firearms which we're always told bolt guns are caseless and yet we always see brass uh, cartridges like this and they're always flying out the sides of the weapon well I had to break it to people that's a case that's exactly the definition of a case this here the bolt gun round <laughs> as a whole is not caseless ammunition that is stupid statement so what we're going to do here is assume that it is a cased round based off all the artwork. So I've designed it with a cased round. Second thing here is it's rocket propelled. So if I remove the casing, we can actually see that the projectile itself, which is a 70 caliber round, has a gyrojet system in the back. Now a gyrojet or gyrojet, this type of system is a rocket propulsion system. And you have a series of tubes cut into it, which are diagonal, and they have a rock propellant that goes out, and it causes the round to rotate because of the diagonal angle of jetting from each of those. So you get a very stable flight. Uh, however, with gyro jets, uh, historically, the problem with them is that they have to take time to accelerate because the rocket has to pick up momentum. 
A traditional firearm, on the other hand, accelerates the round so that by the time it's leaving the barrel, acceleration the second it leaves the barrel has finished. It has ceased and is now deaccelerating from that point. So it's at its fastest pretty much as we leave the barrel. Uh, there are things that may hinder that or change that. For example, if the powder burns and the round is still inside the barrel as the gases are starting to dissipate, we'll actually be slowing down inside the barrel, but that's a whole other conundrum. So for simplicity's sake, rounds in traditional firearms are slowing down the minute they leave the barrel, gyro jets are speeding up. What we're doing here is we're combining both a traditional casing, which you can fill with some sort of powder, has a primer, all that kind of thing, uh, has a big cantilever on the back as well. Cantilever is this big notch you see in the back, and we have a curved lip leading up to it. That is to prevent the rounds from, well, one, they slide over one another easily, and two, that's the gripping point for extraction and ejection to occur from. Now, I've put it a very hard V taper. It'd normally be a lot flatter on the back side, but, you know, minor details that won't affect the video. So, firearm nuts who want to critique every single little thing do know that I understand what I'm talking about. I've just taken some shortcuts for the sake of getting a video made. Please, please spare me. Okay, so what this is going to do is it's going to fire the cartridge, accelerate the round, and then as it's traveling up the barrel, the gyro jet is going to be kicking in. So it's ignited by the propellant. So it is going to continue its acceleration after it leaves the barrel. So we're getting the best of both worlds in theory here. In reality, it will be a mathematical nightmare, but you know what? They've got 30,000 years to figure it out. I'm sure they'll get there. So the weapon itself, um, it looks quite different. Let's strip back some of this weapon uh, so we can actually show it off. So I think we need to start by getting rid of bits of the body. So let's get rid of that piece. That's not required. Let's get rid of the four. Now we'll go the four grip. Let's go the body on the right hand side. Uh, let's go the foresight block as well and now we're starting to see inside our weapon isn't this fancy uh, let's also well we won't get rid of it we'll just slide the butt plate out of the way so what we have here now is an actual functioning firearm shock and horror um, I've put a torch a laser sight and a little camera uh, that links up to the sight in the Marine's helmet into the front of this weapon. And the block that is sitting on top here, uh, on the front, this block would actually contain a battery unit, uh, as well as a heater, because these electrical components are going to get very, very cold in void warfare or on ice planet warfare. Uh, and when electricity gets cold, it basically stops functioning. So you need to have a heating system. We're also going to say that this is therefore a separate housing which is removable and that is why it's modeled the way it is. So now that I've said that, let's also get rid of, um, let's get rid of the side on top, let's get rid of the camera, the laser and the light. Now we've stripped it back and we've got a lot more functional weapon. You can see I have a more modern military style, not a rail system, but a We'll call it a modular system on the front of the weapon here, uh, an extruded aluminium piece. We can also get rid of that because it doesn't add anything to the actual functioning of the weapon. It just means that nothing is actually grabbing the barrel because we have a floated barrel. Free floating barrels, uh, generally the more accepted, more accurate system in firearms. And we don't want to be... Uh, putting any weight on the end of the barrel because it's going to be deflecting the point of aim. So we've got rid of that. And now we have our barrel and our muzzle brake, which is still ludicrously large muzzle brake, but now it is caliber accurate as a muzzle brake. So the muzzle brake is obviously these couple of holes here designed to reduce recoil and such. Very different to our friend below, which is our scale accurate, looks like a 40k bolt gun. 
So that's there for a start. Now the barrel. The barrel is very heavy duty and it's not rifled. It is actually a smooth bore because it doesn't need rifling. Rifling is going to be additional friction grabbing that round because uh, it's digging into and deforming the round. This is essentially a size for size smooth bore with the round. The round is coated in a softer metal than the barrel so wear and erosion won't be too great and it should slide and you know move pretty freely smoothly through the barrel. The gyro jet is going to be imparting the spin on the round, so we don't need rifling in there for that. This means that we're going to increase our barrel life, and uh, the round in theory is going to be less deformed as well when it reaches target. Another thing I've had to do here is put a ton of grooves into the barrel. This is for thermal regulation, because being again in void warfare and such, you are going to build up heat inside the barrel over time. Uh, it won't be a long time either, it'll be only a few seconds of continuous firing before it starts to build up a lot of heat. We cannot easily dissipate that heat uh, in the void because there is no atmosphere to transmit that heat into. Okay, this is where we start playing with things like thermodynamics and such. So what's going to happen instead here is that we have to give it a ton of surface area so that whatever way it can give off heat, it is able to do so. And on top of that, we have a very thick, heavy duty barrel in order for the barrel itself to be able to accept a lot of heat. If it is very thin, it'll reach its critical temperature early and start to deform. So this is a way of avoiding that. Something else that might be able to be done is have an inbuilt cooling system. We have the space for it in this weapon. Uh, even if we put our uh, our fore end back on, you can see we have all that space inside it. We could put something like a water jacket in there. But again, it's only going to be so good as the amount of heat it can take. Something like the International Space Station has an awful amount of radiators on there to try and get rid of the heat generated. It's insane how heat works in space. So then we get to the barrel where it meets the receiver. So that is this big round section here. This is the receiver block that the barrel is mated into. And that big block there is heavy duty and it's tying together all the parts of this weapon. So for example, any sight that mounts on top or any system mounted to the top is mounting to it directly via a rail. The body, the plastic, brown plastic, is not doing anything here. It's entirely 100% mounted to the receiver. The receiver is also mounted to the buffer tube, that is this round tube at the rear here. This is where a big ass spring is going to be that is essentially pushing the bolt back forward and softening the recoil of the bolt moving to the rear. Uh, there is a rail that joins the two on the top so that the two don't flex away from one another and is also supporting a ring and a split ring that is here that goes around the bolt which acts as a bolt guide as it's moving back and forth and reciprocating which we can actually show the bolt will travel like this inside the weapon how fun is that hey and the whole point is that as soon as it leaves that split ring and it's in the buffer tube it is still guided this is what will stop the uh the weapon from uh, having the bolt flinging itself about in random and funny directions all the time. For the actual barrel itself again, some of the things are important with barrels. You'll see there is a bunch of grooves and funny shapes in the bottom here. These are what we call the feed ramps. So because the rounds are double staggered as they come up, we can either have double staggered single feed or essentially a double feed system where Either the round is lined up perfectly in the middle of the magazine, central with the barrel every time when it gets to the top of the magazine because the magazine shape demands it, or we can have it so that either of the two rounds, because there are uh, multiple rounds in this magazine, as you can see if I get the right angle, side by side, they one at a time will flick into place or they'll come up on either the left side or the right side of the magazine. In this case, it's going to come up as a double feed. Therefore, we have to cut these little grooves into the barrel because those grooves will be performing the job of feed ramps and they actually work. 
when the round is fed up into the breech of the weapon, it is going to look like that when it's fully in place. And that is fully seated into the chamber. We have our Catalua still visible at the back because that is going to mate up with the bolt face. On the bolt face itself, we have our ejector pin, which is over here. That's going to push the rounds out via spring action out the ejection port on the side. We have our firing pin hole through the middle here, and we have our extractor core on the side of the bolt here. So there's all that. I haven't drawn feed lips on the magazine. Just if, if I did, you would have a hard time seeing into the, into the magazine itself. So again, firearms nuts, I've left them off deliberately. Can't be farm. Okay, so the bolt itself, and this is the fun part. So let's move this bolt up into position. If I actually grab the bolt, it will help. So in a weapon that is ready to fire, that is the position the bolt will be sitting in. These rounds here will not have actually risen up into... Uh, this round here will not have risen up into place yet because it'll be pressing against the underside of the bolt, essentially, inside the magazine. There will also be a spring that is pressing up against the back here uh, with a guiding pin running into the center here, but much for muchness, we can talk about that later. This little piece here is our hammer. So the hammer is actually being held in place if I buy the sear, and the sear is attached to the trigger, and there is also a trigger spring retaining block. So there are quite a few working parts in here, and what they're doing is when the trigger is pulled, the sear will drop, the hammer will rise, uh, very similar to certain firearm systems some people who are watching, I'm sure, are very familiar with. Uh, the hammer will rise up through this big slot open in the side of the bolt here. If I remove the receiver from the image, you'll see it better. It will rise up and strike the firing pin, which would normally be sitting in here. For the sake of ease of animating, I have not included that part. So receiver, obviously, it's a big solid piece and it's the, the heart of the weapon. So the receiver is, well, it's, it's this entire thing here that you see blinking in and out. That's the receiver. So you can see it's quite a lot of the functional weapon. On the other side of the weapon, we have our cocking handle. So the cocking handle here is slotted into the side of the bolt. And when it's moved to the rear, it will pull the bolt to the rear. So now will be a good time for me to remove the left side of the body. So you can see that. And we have our cocking handle in the cocking handle guide. So if I grab that and I grab the bolt, we can move them both. Uh, you can pull it to the rear, to about here, uh, to cock the weapon. So the weapon is now in the cocked position and we can use our uh, cocking handle once again and we can slide it back forward to its resting position somewhere there. Not important for the purposes of demonstrating what the weapon is doing. So that is what's going on with this section. You also see things like there's a, a hole here in the side that's firing pin retention. Pin goes through that hole. So fun little design here to make a functioning bolt gun. As you can see, it is quite a bit different. There is a lot more going on. And you'll also notice there's no gas system. There's no mechanisms for moving that bolt back. This is a simple blowback design, but with a uh, locked trigger. And I haven't actually put any safety mechanism into it yet. Whoopsies. But the idea is that as the... Uh, bolt round the pressure of the acceleration, the expanding of the gases of the cartridge propels the bolt round up the barrel. The same amount of force is going to be applied equally and opposite in the opposite direction. And it's going to push the cartridge and the bolt itself backwards. When it does that, that is how our bolt round is going to be extracted and ejected from the weapon. So simple concept. 
Uh, at 70 caliber, with the size of a marine, uh, with their crazy gigantic hands, the handle doesn't look right. <laughs> the handle is as big as the magazine itself because, well, bolt rounds are not actually... They're not like 40 millimeter grenades. If it was 40 millimeter grenades, the bolt would look a lot more proportioned with that muzzle break and things like that. It's not. A, a 70 caliber round is only 17 point something, 17.3, something like that, millimeters in size. It's tiny. Um, 50 caliber rounds only 12.7 millimeters in size. So a 40 millimeter grenade is almost four times the size of a 50 caliber round in diameter. Uh, so you, straight away you can realize the difference here between what's cool looking, which is the bottom design, and what's more functional, the top design. So you end up with this gigantic handle because it's got a fit. Um, and we know from humans who are the rough size of a space marine, how big hands are. And we also know roughly how big the gloves or gauntlets of a marine are because, well, there's certain, again, limitations of human anatomy that says they're about this size. And we can look at things like space suits and a rough analog and so we end up with this giant hand guard uh, or pistol grip and giant trigger and the reason we end up with that is because well, it's, it's what basic physics demands that it must be so that's why it's that big and it looks therefore like a grossly misproportioned essentially submachine gun um, which fires from a closed bolt so once I can start uh, re putting this all back together. There's quite a few bits of body to put back on. So let's put all this stuff back in place. Straight away you can see it's it's a very cosmetic but it's a funny looking weapon. Uh, and if you, even if you just removed the, uh, <laughs> the, f the four parts of the weapon, it's a very pathetic looking weapon now. So, so that's why I've done the, the large cosmetic appliances for grip. And again, gigantic grip, uh, much bigger than the magazine well because of the size of the hands that have to use it. Uh, so, funny enough, one of the things that they may have actually gotten wrong on bolt guns is the amount of ammo they can carry. Uh, a straight magazine, even like this one here, will comfortably carry uh, 25 to 30 rounds of ammunition, depending on the length of it. The magazine itself is actually a very boring straight magazine. So, in theory, they could make bigger and bigger magazines. If I didn't have a magazine well that came so far down the weapon, uh, we could go to a curve magazine or drum magazines. We could be holding 50, 100 rounds in something that's sort of roughly the same sizes as what are supposedly 30 and 40 round magazines uh, in 40k as the models are designed. So yeah, anyway, that was a fun little thought exercise. So some other considerations to take in mind. Some of the tolerances in here are a little bit loose and part of why I've gone for the delayed blowback is well, if you look at, say, machine guns or assault rifles, most of those use uh, gas operating a piston. The problem is, is that gas has to travel some distance up the barrel before being diverted down another pipe into a new direction to push the working parts and the mechanisms backwards. Unfortunately, if you're going to be fighting in vacuum warfare, void warfare, that gas is going to expand so fast and at such a funny rate, that mechanism is going to become very unreliable and your weapon is going to be performing very differently in the void as it will in atmosphere. Blowback is going to be a lot more similar and controlled in both circumstances. Um, is blowback ideal for this? No, the most ideal mechanism for a bolt gun is going to be an electronically actuated system. That comes with its own drawbacks. For a start, everything has to be very well lubricated which means a lot of maintenance and downtime because there's going to be a lot of extra moving parts in there because you've added a system onto the weapon. Those lubricants are going to have to be able to take temperatures from, you know, 100, maybe 200 even, depending if you're fighting like a lava world, I don't know. They're going to have to take temperatures that are much above ambient temperatures in combat zones today. They're also going to have to be going down to 
potentially 150, 200 degrees below zero because Marines fight in even the coldest parts of the galaxy. And those lubricants cannot freeze and turn solid and become a glue holding the different parts of the weapon together. So that's a consideration. And the electrical system, same thing, it needs to be both heated and it needs to be cooled. And because it's going to be in the void, you have to put in a cooling system which doesn't rely on transferring heat to atmosphere. These are all things to take into mind when designing a science fiction weapon, uh, especially when it comes to the bolt gun. Now, at 70 caliber here, and being a relatively stubby round, and knowing that most of the acceleration that's occurring here is going to be occurring uh, from the gyro jet itself, so it's just getting an initial boost, little pump to start it going uh, from the cartridge. That means there is actually no reason why a basic human couldn't use this weapon, and I don't think the recoil would be that horrifically savage. Uh, again, the recoil is going to be based on how much of that equal and opposite force is pushing back onto the user, but being a smoothbore weapon here, and, well, we know smoothbore uh, weapons of 70 caliber, we know them very well on this planet. They're called muskets. So... It's not going to be as sloppy a fit as a musket ball in that barrel, but it gives you an idea of what 70 caliber recoil is. And well, since we use them for a good 300 years in warfare, we can probably safely say that humans could easily handle 70 caliber recoil on the battlefield in a firearm. So funny enough, this weapon here as designed, you can start issuing it to the Imperial Guard today over the auto gun and the las gun because um, they're quite capable of handling it in all likelihood, ironically. Uh, and if anything, I would be trying, if I was Games Workshop, to be looking at 30 and 40 millimeters as the size of the grenade. So we're talking more like, instead of 70 caliber, we're talking like, not two inches, but probably like inch and three quarter caliber, or inch and a half caliber, would be far better representation of a bolt gun. Uh, and another little point to make to people is, people talk about bolt guns being like being a grenade fired into them it's really not the 70 caliber round even the actual head on this bolt here contains very very little explosive it has to for the size of the weapon uh, if the walls are too thin that form the head then it will just break apart inside the barrel so it's going to be sturdy enough to make its journey to target which means that there's only a piece of explosive in this tip that's maybe the size of two green peas two little balls of green pea you know like a half inch long by a quarter inch wide a little cylinder of explosive in there that's it it's very little explosive in this round which means that the actual explosive effects well if you look at something like uh like an aa12 doing 12 gauge um explosive shotgun slugs very 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 similar performance to that very similar size to that uh and it's nowhere near as devastating as a actual grenade system like a 40 millimeter or a 30 millimeter and you end up in this funny situation where people think oh explosive tip ammunition and they'll take something like 556 and say it's explosive 556 right the explosive 556 is not that much more dangerous to flesh than if you had a heavier mass in that 556 round, it would just accelerate the 556 round to a greater level because the actual kinetic force that it can impart is the velocity squared times by the mass of the round. So the projectile, yeah, small rounds with explosives, way less practical than large rounds with explosives. So the bigger we can go, the better when it comes to bolt gun ammunition. But there you go, uh, we've made a working design for a bolt gun, and yeah, little things have to be tweaked to make it fully accurate and fully function, but all the dimensions stack up, the bolt has the correct amount of travel, cocking handle does its job, firing pin moves the right amount, hammer is able to pivot the correct amount, sear and bent are holding correctly, trigger is doing its job, it's just an ugly looking weapon. Um, but hey, again, with weapons, it's form follows function. It needs to work as a weapon first and foremost. Uh, and looks are a secondary and more minor thing. And, you know, I like the design of the bolt gun. I think they're a really cool looking weapon. But let's play with it. Let's expand on how this thing works a little. And for the love of God, Games Workshop, you've had enough time now 
uh, with your universe. You can start correcting things like the caseless ammo thing. It's not caseless ammo. I know it's really cool to say that something is caseless ammo. It's very science fiction. But you can't then draw cases in all your artwork uh, and have cases spitting outside the, the weapon because it, it tells us the opposite. He's not caseless ammo. You're full of shit. <laughs> um, yeah, come on. If you, you changed everything else in the fluff. Let's change that too. Anyway, that's it for me. I'm back with the Outer Circle. Uh, this has been a look at the bolt gun from a more technical point of view. Is it perfect? No, nothing ever is. Um, but yeah, let's let's just enjoy it. Uh, thoughts and comments below, as always, guys. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you all on the next one.